So let's look at a way we can make every one of these splat puddles be made from a different texture splat by choosing from a random subregion of a texture. The way this works is that we have a texture that has multiple textures packed into one, and they're arranged into tiles so that we can index into each one with another random offset. We've already imported a texture that has four variations of a splat in a 2x2 two two configuration, and this technique supports textures with any width and height as long as the width and height are the same, or another way of putting it is that the subtiles have to be square. So we have to make some modifications to our main material first. Go to the section where we have done the initial tiling, and we're going to introduce another level of tiling. Create a multiply node and plug the tiled UVs into it, and we'll chain that up into the right nodes. Next, we're going to multiply that by another parameter which I'm going to call sub UV tiles. And the default I'll set to two for now to match our texture configuration. So if we open and close the node previews, they'll refresh and we can see that we have the initial tiling of two, which mainly controls the scale of our whole setup. And then another multiplication of two, which brings it up to a double of four tiles. Now let's dive inside the splat offset material function. And we'll need a new function input to feed the new sub UV tiles into the function. So I'll go and get that value and feed it into the slot we've just created and quickly do that for all four offset nodes. We want to create a random 2D offset that we can randomly index into the sub UV sections of the texture atlas. So we could just reuse the random offset that we had before. Again, we could create a new offset, but that means extra random calls. And it's up to you if you want to incur the expense. But going back into the splat offset, we want to multiply the random 2D offset by the sub UV tiling amount. That means we need a multiply node. And we take the output of the append, which is the random 2D offset, and use that as the first input and the sub UV tiling value as the second. I'll just go over and create a default tiling value for the input, which I'll just set to 4. Also, to make this a bit easier to visualize whilst we're inside the material function editor, I'm going to go and copy the input to this and bring it inside so we can use it as a preview. And I'll set the view to a left view and unlit. It just makes it easy to see if we do anything wrong. Now to get random sub UV offsets, we need an integer offset by using a floor node to get offsets like 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. But based off the random value. I want to preview this, but I've just realized that the other function input doesn't have a preview. So I'll quickly set that up by mimicking what's happening on the outside. Just taking a look, I need to do this subtract and feed it into the repeating UVs preview. That's easy to do. I'll create a subtract, hook up the inputs, and feed that into the repeating UVs, and then turn on the use preview toggle. Now we get some feedback. Now for the next part, we need to make a bit of space because we're going to add the new sub UV integer tile offsets to the UVs we had before, but before the rotation and scaling. Since this is still a simple offset at this stage, we want to do it before rotation. So we'll hook that up. Next, there are a couple of fixes we need to make because of the fact that we have added to this offset. Our rotation pivot is now no longer guaranteed to be at 0.5.5, it could now be 1.5 or 2.5, up to however many tiles we have plus 0.5. So let's get our offset and add it to the 0.5 value to get the new pivot for the current subcell rotation. Also, our scaling center is no longer guaranteed to be at 0.5 either. So we need to expose that value from the UV scale function, which allows us to set it if we want. Dive inside and create a new function input. 
and we'll use the 0.5 value as the default in case we don't want to have to plug anything into it from the outside. Now we replace the nodes that receive the 0.5 constant with the function input. And I need to change the input type to a vector 2D to make it all work correctly. Now I'll apply and save that and then feed in the correct center pivot for the scale function. So we've been doing all this extra offsetting by adding whole integer offsets like 0, 1, 2, and so on, which at the moment makes the UV shift by a whole value into the next repeating range, and makes it go outside of the clipping area because of the clamp sampling mode. What we actually want is to turn the offsets into sub-UV offsets by dividing the integer offsets into fractional ones dictated by how many sub-UV tiles we have. So we need to multiply by the inverse of how many tiles there are, so that we always stay within the 0 to 1 range of the source texture. For the inverse value, we can do a constant of 1 divided by the sub-UV tile value, 1 divided by any input value apart from 0 gives the inverse of that input value. Hit apply, and let's see where we are with that. And we actually need to switch to using the texture with the multiple splats, otherwise there's no point in doing any of this. So I'll select the sample nodes, and go over to the textures folder, select the right asset, and back in the details panel, I'll click the arrow to use that asset. Now we're almost done. There's definitely a random sub-UV texture being sampled here, but there's one issue with it, which is that we are sampling in clamp mode, which clamps in the 0 to 1 range, but now we're wanting to treat each sub-UV region as its own section that we want to clamp within, and that's something we have to go in and do manually. We can see that we're sampling too many splats, and there are even some edge artifacts around. So we'll dive back inside, and we'll do this clamping right before we do the inverse multiply. Create a clamp node and feed in the UVs as the input to the clamp. And for the min, we want to use the integer offset as the top left corner for that particular tile, which we get from the floor node which created those offsets. Then for the max, we want that same value, but increased by the one one vector which is the size of one whole tile, to bring the max to the bottom right corner. Then we plug that into the max and chain up the result to the inverse multiply. And we'll hit apply and check our final result. Now we have a random splat from a texture atlas. This can now be extended to even more variations by supplying a texture with higher multiples of splats, and then changing the sub UV tiles value. We also have to adjust the overall scale again because of the extra multiplication done, but that's something you can tweak. Next we'll be looking at fixing another artifact that can happen in this kind of material, and exploring some technical and performance considerations 